Well, good morning and welcome to A Moment in the Word with Pastor Philbert Candelaria. I hope you're ready to dive into a scripture that has been asked by many people, many Christians. And the question that was asked is, how does the knowledge of good and evil make man like God? And you can read that in Genesis 3.22. Let's go there. It says, Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now lest he reach out his hand and take also the tree of knowledge and he, and he will live forever. So see, God had a plan. See, he knew that once man understood the knowledge of good and evil, that there was still another tree that was left in that garden and that was a tree of living for eternity. So God had to do something because now man understands that knowledge. See, the man has become like one of us when he says that in scripture, what does he mean by that? Because now man, Adam and Eve, knows good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take from the tree of life. And here's where I want you to focus on. Because if he were to take from that tree of life, he would live forever. So God here in Genesis is speaking himself. The question arises, how exactly did knowing good and evil make man like God? So let's dig a little bit deeper in that. Adam and Eve already intellectually knew the difference between good and evil. That wasn't new to them. They knew it. They were given that because of God's command not to eat of that tree or that fruit. They knew it was right to eat of all the other trees except that tree that God had told them to refrain from eating. But see, however, when they chose to disobey, here's where it comes in and here's where you need to focus on this. They knew evil experientially. I mean, they knew it way beyond their capability because they themselves had sinned against God. See, once they ate of that fruit, they totally understood all parts of evilness. And why? Because they have sinned against what God had told them not to do. At that very point, they fully understood both right and wrong. See, God is the only one that knows everything. God understands everything. He knows the hearts of man. He totally, totally seeks our heart and he digs deep to bring to the surface that which the Holy Spirit needs to reveal to us. See, God knows our nature. And because our nature is evil, he understands that we need a savior. We need somebody to be able to convict us of that very real evil that is present from within us. See, they became like God right then and there, and God understood that. They now realize what evil was truly like. See, the serpent's deception here in the garden had included a grain of truth, and I need you to understand that. See, the serpent didn't totally lie to Eve. There was a grain of truth in that. Satan told Eve, God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. See, so there's a grain of truth right there. Because once they did that, they would know good and evil. Let me read Genesis 3, 5 to you. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So this serpent, nobody knows, but you have to understand that this serpent didn't come in as an ugly creature. It says it was very beautiful, very wise and cunning. And it walked on two feet upright. So it had to be on the eye level of Eve for her to even pay attention to it. Because if it was slithering on the ground, this ugly um, animal, this serpent, she would have never paid attention to it. So it had to appeal to her eyes. And not only did it appeal to her eyes, it began to twist God's word to make it seem like it was still God's word. And because he is full of lies. He is blown full of lies. He was very deceptive. And we have to be very careful that we don't entertain his devices or his tools because everything that he puts in our path will always have a price to pay. It is not enough for humans to understand and experience good as much as it is given to us, but we have to trust God to be able to reveal to our hearts what is good. Let me read a scripture to you. Genesis 131. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, there was morning on the sixth day. See, God, when he makes something, he understands our needs. He understands our state of welfare. He knows exactly where we are at and where we need to be. 
So God, when he made things for us, he made it to last eternally for it to be good, not only to our flesh, but to our spirit so that it can grow us. It can allow us to get closer to him. But see, Adam and Eve in the garden, they wanted more knowledge and more experience on their own determinant. You know, they wanted this. And because they wanted this, they were willing to disobey God's commandments. See, imagine yourself in the garden. Everything is provided for you. Every single thing. There is no sin. There is no wickedness. There is no sickness. But one thing that you have to do, and God says, stay away from this tree. And because the flesh wants the one thing that it cannot have, what happens? It goes after it. And when it goes after that, then right then and there, we have a price to pay. See, the entry of sin into the world was a curse leading to a loss of fellowship with God. And because of that loss of fellowship with God, there is now judgment upon Adam and Eve. As there is judgment on us because of Adam and Eve, these judgments have affected all humanity Go with me to Genesis chapter 3, verse 16 and 19. And in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16 and 19, it says, To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife. And this is what you have to understand. He had listened to the voice of his wife. And because of that, listening to the voice of his wife, he now has to suffer his consequence. And, and I love this. It says, and Adam, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, you have eaten of that tree of which I have commanded you that you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. So there's Adam's part in all this. She brings children with childbearing pains. He has to be cursed by the ground. And you got to understand one thing. Women, though they go through so many different difficulties as a woman, men will not usually live longer than women. So that is one of our consequences of that sin that happened in the garden. I don't know. I'm just my estimate, you know, what I think, how I study the Bible. But see, this morning, we need to look that God can end this. God can end all this wickedness, all this sin, all this lust of the flesh, everything that we desire that is not of him, he can end it. Because I want to read this to you. Only in the end when God creates the new heavens and the new earth, this curse will be broken. In Revelations chapter 21, verse 3 and 4, God makes us a promise there. And let's go ahead and read that. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall have no sting. What a promise. What a promise. Listen, look, God's dwelling place is now amongst the people. Where does he dwell? Here. This is his temple. And I want you to understand that if you know God is living in you because this is his temple, wouldn't you want to take care of that temple? Wouldn't you want to make sure that, you know what, you are doing everything according to his precepts, according to what he tells us to do? Now, yes, there are things that we will fail in, but we don't have to fail because we are running a race. And as I begin to close, let me share this with you. In, in high school, I ran track. I ran long distance. I was very good at it. You know, and the only reason why they found out I was good at long distance is because I was in ISS, which they called in-school suspension all the time. So the day that the coach was doing the class in ISS, he made us run a mile. And some of his track members were in there. And guess what? I blew them all away on the mile. And he's like, wow, you can run. I go, I didn't know I could run. He goes, well, I want you on the team. But I learned one thing about long distance. If you start off fast you're not going to finish very well. You have to pace yourself. And I remember the first time I started off fast and it was like almost a third of the way to that finish line. I could, I was struggling because I burnt out all my energy in the beginning. And then my coach told me, his name was Coach Henry. He told me, you know what, Philbert? Pace yourself. Because when you get close to that finish line and you're lagging behind some people, you can turn up the speed. 
and you can finish the race. That's what the Apostle Paul says. He says, run and run well and finish the race. So we know what good and evil is here today. It's not positive for us. Evil is not positive as it wasn't for Adam and Eve. Rather, it'll bring us into eternal damnation. It'll bring us, it separates us from God. And you know what? We will fall short of the glory because the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 3.23. And I want you to understand this. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. See, we live under what they call the twin, the twin curse of sin and death. And he also went on in Romans 6.23 to say, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. Who will rescue me from this body? Who will rescue me from this death? And my answer is our Lord and our Savior because he already did. When he said it is finished on the cross and he um, you know, um, displayed to all the haters when he rose on the third day that sin and death had been conquered, death had lost its sting. You know why he did that? He did it for you and I. So I pray that you understand this, that you take this to heart, that we are all running a race. And our job is to get across the finish line. So some people never get to that finish line because they were too busy living the race of the world rather than the race for eternity. And I pray for those, you know, I have friends who have lost their lives and never chose to serve God. They never even started the race, nor did they finish it. But we who would call ourselves Christians, we're in this race. And to get to that finish line, why do we get to that finish line? Because we want other people to know that it's doable, that we can do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, Philippians 4.13. And what that means is, doesn't mean you can jump in front of a car and stop it. No, what it means is that God gives you the strength when you have no strength. He gives you the, the knack where there is no knack. He gives you the tenacity where there is no tenacity. And most of all, he gives you everything that he is. Jesus Christ is in heaven interceding for us. And he left us a beautiful one that is behind that we call the Holy Spirit who convicts, who comforts, and most of all, who loves. So God bless you here at A Moment in the Word. Um, I ask that you pray for our event. Sunday, we're doing a, a big youth movie night with door prizes, food, we're inviting all the youth from Chick-fil-A's and the surrounding community. Um, it's not a religious event because we understand that a lot of these children don't even go to church. We feed them physically and then we allow the Holy Spirit to prepare them spiritually. We love you here at Lighthouse Galveston. Know that we're praying for you. We may not know your name, but we're praying for each and every one of you. God bless you all.